Hi everyone, it's me, Bill. A lot of people are asking questions about the Belfang Bofang Baofang UV5R. This is an inexpensive Chinese radio which offers a lot of action. First of all, it can be used as a ham radio for two meter and 70 centimeter. It can also be used as a police scanner. It can also be used as an FM radio. There are a lot of great features designed into this radio and it's cheap as dirt. It's about 25 to $30. You can also pay a little bit extra and get a kit that comes with a spare antenna. So a lot of people have been asking quite, oh, there's someone right now. This is what happens when, you, when you're on live. Hello, you're on live with Bill. Hi, Bill. Mm -hmm. I just got a UV5R. I'm mm -hmm. hoping you can help me. Oh, yeah. No, that's a good question. That's what we're doing today. Yeah. Great. Can I use this mm -hmm. as a walkie-talkie mm -hmm. or a weather radio? Yeah. Can I use no, I think I can answer thing? all your questions. Thanks for your call. Yeah. Oh, hey, Bill. Oh, what? I noticed it looks like you're losing your hair. Do you want it? It was just rambling on there at the end. But anyhow, let's get into it. So this is the box my UV5R came in. And uh, you can see this is everything that was in the box. This here is your radio and your battery battery just clips right into the back and usually comes fully charged is your antenna sometimes this antenna is called a rubber duck it's usually not the best antenna but it comes with the radio there's a clip which you can screw onto the back and then you can clip it onto your belt like a really cool guy they also have a headset it's either push to talk or you can set the Vox option and you can transmit on that and it comes with its own little charging base and uh, the charging unit and of course a little lanyard once again make you look cool so this is the UV5R and uh, everyone's favorite part of new ownership right there okay now anyone can own a UV5R only a licensed ham can press this here button right here this is the push to talk button or PTT as us radio guys say anyone can own this radio anyone can use this radio to listen perfectly legal however the push to talk it's a no-no unless you have a license and even then it still might be a no-no depending on the frequency you're on the uv5r comes programmed for vhf frequencies between 136 megahertz and 175 megahertz and uhf frequencies 400 through 520 megahertz this range includes amateur ham radio 2 meter, which is 144 to 148 megahertz, and 70 centimeter, 420 to 450 megahertz. If you have an amateur radio license or a ham license, then you can transmit on all of these frequencies. This frequency range also includes GMRS, FRS, MURS, Marine, frequencies, none of which you can transmit legally on using the UV5R. There are several different reasons for that. One being the output power of the UV5R. Another one being the fact that you can remove the antenna on the UV5R. And there's probably a couple of other picky little things that people can mention down there in the comments at some point later. For FRS and GMRS, they're an assigned range of frequencies which have been broken out to specific channels. So for instance, this particular frequency is channel one and this frequency is channel two. For FRS and GMRS, many of these frequencies overlap. If you can program your radio for FRS, you have also programmed it for GMRS. MURS or MERS is multi-use radio service. There are five channels between 151 and 154 megahertz. megahertz. Other uses in the frequency range covered by the UV5R include NOAA weather, as well as maybe your local police, the water department, school buses, libraries, things like that who have radio services. They may also use these frequencies on their approved radios, not on, not transmitting on a UV5R. If you're getting your UV5R in order to listen to police signals, you may not be able to hear them because many police use digital uh, services, which means you can't pick it up on the UV5R. I can't stress this enough. You cannot transmit on any of those frequencies unless in the event of an emergency. And you may only transmit on the ham frequencies if you have a ham license. Now, if you'd like to use FRS or GMRS, you can get a permit from the FC. 
you can get a permit from the FCC to use a GMRS radio. GMRS is almost exactly like FRS, except it's usually more powerful. FRS stands for Foundly Radio Service, and those are the walkie-talkies you can pick up at the big box stores. Come in bubble wrap, you can give them to your kids to play with them. They're fun, they don't have a great range, they only transmit on like a half a watt or something like that. And although the UV5R can transmit on those frequencies, it is against FCC rules to transmit on those frequencies, and you might get your knuckles wrapped like the nuns used to do. Listening to any of these frequencies on the UV5R is perfectly legal and why not encouraged. Most of the UV5Rs today have a software block stopping you from being able to transmit on these frequencies. Again, if you could, you can only do it if it's an emergency and I'm not an attorney, so don't listen to anything I say. So like I said, I'm not an attorney However, if you are in a state of emergency, you might want to use your Baofeng for emergency reasons. And if you wanted to do that, there is a way. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the old UV5R. I'll turn it on. Channel mode. You see it's got a very friendly welcome there. Your radio can either be in channel mode or frequency mode. And you switch between the two using this button here. Frequency mode. Frequency mode, you just type in whatever frequency you'd like to listen to or speak on, and it sets it right up. Channel mode allows you to set channels, like I mentioned that we have for GMRS. Channel mode. And you can program those channels in. I can show you how to do that later using Chirp. Frequency mode. If you wanted to remove the GMRS block that's in place on your radio, it's a very simple procedure. You hold down the push to talk button, the monitor button, the channel mode versus frequency mode button. You may need to be Mr. Spock in order to do this. Hold down those three buttons and turn it on. And you see the word, and you see the word factory comes up. That means it's a factory reset and you are good to go. So with your UV5R, there are a couple things you ought to know about. First of all is the MON button, which is short for monitor, which basically turns off the squelch. So the radio is nice and quiet right now. If you hold the button in, it shuts off the squelch, and now you can hear all the static that you would expect to hear on a radio. If you tap the button, see you got a flashlight here. Ooh, very bright flashlight. If you tap it again, you get a flashing light, flashing flashlight, and tap it one more time and it shuts off. At the top of the radio is the call button, and if you tap that, you will get your FM station. Local country music. Don't want to play too much, I'll get in trouble. If you hold that button, you get a very annoying alarm and flashlight, the whole works. You can set on the radio whether that alarm goes out in transmit or whether it just stays right here with your radio. So this is your basic radio. This is what it looks like. There are a lot of upgrades that you can do to this radio and most of them are very inexpensive and will give you a lot more fun and enjoyment out of the radio. A couple of items for you to consider include maybe a better antenna. You usually wanna go with the Nagoya 771. This particular kit came with the Abri. Oh. This particular kit came with the Abri antenna. It's a nice big whip antenna and it will increase your transmit and receive range. That's upgrade number one. Upgrade number two on Bill's list of upgrades is a better battery, a bigger battery. What's really nice about this battery is this little guy right here. Hopefully you can see the little hole there. That is for a USB charge, which you can also charge on your in your car or off of your phone pack. If this battery were to run out, you don't need the whole big charging station. You can just plug this right into any USB outlet that you have. Real easy to pop off the battery. Out with the old. And in with the new. Frequency mode. It's golden, baby. The next upgrade that comes on Bill's list of possible upgrades to your UV5R is a cage on the top. So as you can see, I printed this one using my 3D printer. And what this does is, it first of all protects your volume knob, so you can't accidentally turn it on or off or turn it up or down. It also protects your three buttons on the side, that's your monitor, your call button, and your push to talk button. 
So you can see they're recessed and you can't press them by accident. Really nice if you have this thrown into your backpack or clipped onto your belt that you don't need to worry about it going up or down. I was out hiking with a buddy of mine not too long ago and his radio kept going off, kept the call button kept going, he kept accidentally transmitting. And that's when I thought, gotta get me one of these. Now, one other super cool thing you can add to your radio to make you an uber nerd is a handset. So if you check out the radio, we'll open up our secret trap door. And you can see I got here the Anytone handset. Panel mode. There's both a speaker and a microphone here. And you can see it push to talk, it pushes, it talks. This is really great if you want to have your radio maybe in your backpack and you could hang this guy right on your chest or something. If you want to have this baby in your backpack and you can hang this on your chest or on the strap of your backpack, it's a great little accessory. I like it a lot. You can also then use all this equipment and a cup holder and you can put this radio in your car. You can take off this little antenna and get a mag mount and you can literally have a mobile radio in your car for under a hundred bucks. I'll put a link to this guy in the comments. This is my own personal review of all of this equipment. Nobody sent me anything for free. I'm not endorsing anything. This is all just for fun. This is the way I've done things and I hope you enjoy doing it the same way. Or your own way, I really don't care. Now, a lot of people ask, how do you program this thing? How do I get things into it? Well, first of all, you could just type in the frequencies you want to listen to, which is very useful, especially if you're looking for NOAA or whatever. But the faster and better way to do it is using Chirp. Let me show you that. Programming in Chirp is not rocket surgery. All you need is a cable. This one came with my radio. I recommend if you are going to get a cable that you get one just like this. I'll put a link to the cable down below. So you take your radio and you open up this little trap door on the side. And then you want to insert your little inserty thingy in there. Make sure when you put it in, put it in really tight. Otherwise, this thing won't work. Next, we have to boot up Chirp on the computer and plug our radio in. So let's go do that. And we're going to plug our UV5R into one of the USB slots and then turn it on. You want to make sure your UV5R is about midway between high and low. And this is what Chirp looks like. So the first thing we want to do is download from the radio. So we're going to come up here to File, Radio, Download from Radio. It's going to ask you which COM port and the name, make, and model of your radio. So it's the old Baofeng UV5R. It says it's cloning. So what it's actually doing, it's downloading any information that's currently on the radio. And you'll be able to see that it will all be blank. Hopefully. Probably. I think so. Okay, so what this is showing me is this first column is showing me all of the channels on the radio. Remember, frequencies, you can type in whatever you want, but channels are preset. So channel one is set to frequency 140, 125, 145, 225 for, for channel number two, etc. straight on down. You'll want to find the names of your local repeaters as well as maybe your police, NOAA, GMRS channels if you want to listen to those. What I'm going to do here is show you a file that I created. You see there's now this tab, which was the original, and now this tab, which is what I have preset. In this column, these are the repeaters that are local to my area. And you can see those go up to about channel 25. Channel 26, that's Havertown Police Department. I can listen to my local police. I can't talk to them, but I can listen. There are also several nationally known frequencies that people listen to or transmit on in the case of an emergency. You can see I have down here one that's called Prepper 1, Prepper 2, US Call Out, Bug Out, and Disaster. These are great channels to have pre-programmed into your radio. In the event of an emergency, you can either listen in or if it's an emergency, you can transmit on these frequencies and get help or provide help in your local environment. Further down the list, you can see I've got MAR-9 and MAR-22. These are particular marine radio stations. These are emergency stations. These are Coast Guard calling stations. I can listen in on these. And again, 
in the event of an emergency, I might be able to transmit on these. However, I don't own a boat, so I don't see that happening anytime soon. I also have stations 42 through 48 pre-programmed as NOAA weather stations. There are NOAA weather stations all over the country. Every one of them transmits on one of these frequencies. You'll need to tune around a little to find out which one is local to you. Once you find it, the other nine will either not be transmitting in your area at all, or you'll be able to faintly pick up the transmission. Further down, you can see my stations 50 through 71 are GMRS stations. Again, I can listen on all these stations. I cannot transmit on these stations in the, unless in the event of an emergency. And the radio should be blocked from allowing me to transmit on these stations. However, I did show you the trick to unlock it. From 73 to 83, you can see I have programmed another set of repeaters. And these are repeaters down in South Jersey where I sometimes spend my weekends. In order to get this information into this radio, all I need to do is come up here to radio, select upload to radio. Again, COM4, the Baofeng. And now you can see the flashing lights mean we are in the cloning process. Once the cloning is complete, the radio will reboot. It'll click, you'll see a welcome. And just like that. Didn't say welcome for a very specific reason. It's, I wanna show you some other settings. You can see in Chirp, there are two tabs on the left hand side. The top one says memories and the bottom one says settings. Settings is very important. Let's have a look in there. You've got basic settings, advanced settings, other settings, work mode settings, FM radio preset, DTMF and service settings. So let's go through these one at a time. Some of these are important, some of these are not. So in the basic settings, you can see carrier squelch level, uh, battery saver, et cetera, et cetera. Read your UV5R manual. You'll understand what these settings mean. For right now, I'm leaving them exactly as they're set. For advanced settings, you can see for a voice, I've selected English. I've also checked the box for broadcast FM radio. And dual watch, I've checked the box for dual watch, which will allow me to listen on two different frequencies at the same time. Other settings, this is where you can have a little bit of fun with your UV5R. Power on message one says Bill O me. Power on message two is KC3RYS, which is my call sign. And if you watch on the radio, when I turn it on, below KC3RYS. VHF lower limit, I have set to 136 megahertz and upper limit 174. That's a jailbreak that you'll want to put into the radio. And I'll show you that as well. UHF lower limit 400 to 520. For work mode settings, I wouldn't touch these right now until you have a better understanding of the radio. So we'll just leave these alone. The FM radio preset, as I mentioned before, my local country station. Your DTMF settings, once again, let's leave these blank for right now. And service settings are one that you probably want to look at for the squelch control. The initial squelch control on your UV5R is not very good. Almost all the squelch settings are the same. So as you can see here, I've started at 15 increment to 25, 35, 45, all the way out to 95. That's on my VHS, VHF. And for UHF, I did the same. This will give you more fine-tuned control on your squelch. So that's my roundup on the UV5R. I hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. If I haven't, please ask a question in the comments. I'd be happy to answer. If you're interested in more information about Chirp, I'd be happy to share that with you as well. Leave a comment down below and I'll happily send you out my chirp file or anything else that might be helpful for you. You can get a list of your local repeaters from Repeater Book and you should be able to copy and paste that right into chirp. Good luck and have fun. Hope to see you soon. Fade to black.